FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 829.18. Well, do you think it's possible to erase history, make it disappear? And what does that mean for your future and for the country's future? There's a lot going on there. Social media seems to be kind of at the apex of the trend. But first, as always, we invite you to join the dialogue, the conversation. Let's talk about this. Email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. So Erasing America, Losing Our Future by Destroying Our Past, new book by James Robbins. And James, you're quoted as saying social media has become a public menace. And I think that's in a lot of ways putting it charitably. What uh, First, let's define the problem here. What exactly is the problem? Well, the problem is that we've had uh, several generations of kids raised on a completely revisionist view of the country uh, in which the basic premise is we have uh, an evil past, you know, a country founded on slavery, on exploitation, on uh, sexism, on capitalism, you know, and other evil things like that. And um, because of this now, uh, we have generations of people who completely don't respect the country. And uh, so this has infiltrated itself into all realms of our public life. We have people tearing down monuments, vandalizing monuments, uh, disrespecting the flag, uh, disrespecting the Constitution, and uh, you know, generally having an extremely negative view of the country and its legacy. Yeah, so we've got revisionist history taking place all over. We're evil, evil uh country. We were founded on fascism, on depriving the Indians of rights. And yet, uh, you know, they're kind of missing something, aren't they? Uh, I think they're missing a lot. I mean, the, the history of the United States is definitely more good than bad by focusing exclusively on all of the mistakes that were made, of the evils that were committed and so forth. They are seeking to redefine the country so that anyone who feels pride in America uh, should actually feel shame. Anyone who says a good thing about the country is castigated as some kind of a nationalist, fascist, or some other thing mm-hmm. like that. Uh, when in fact, the history of the United States is is a very noble one. Uh, this is a fantastic country with a wonderful history. It's not to say that mistakes weren't made or that bad things didn't happen, which of course is true of any country, but by consistently pounding home all of the negativity about our history, uh, they create people who are then can be molded into whatever they want to make, you know, things like socialism appealing to say that, you know, Venezuela should be the model for the future. Yeah. And Venezuela is uh, doing great now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I love uh, I saw a tweet recently from Michael Moore from a few years ago saying how great Venezuela was for taking care of the people, you know, and now uh, they're using their money for toilet paper and, and you can't buy milk. Yeah. And a lot of bad things are happening to socialist countries. Countries, and yet uh, the left seems completely oblivious to this fact, don't they? Oh, well, sure. They'll say, oh, that wasn't real socialism, or they blame the United States for criticizing the socialist countries or some other thing like that. Um, but again, it gets back to the question of history. If you look back throughout history, you see that socialism doesn't work, collectivism, statism, it just isn't going to function for you. But if you wipe out that history, then you can say, look, we have this fresh new idea called socialism. Isn't it wonderful? Mm -hmm. Everybody gets free stuff. Yeah, but Venezuela, so the first thing they did, Hugo Chavez, when he took over, took over stuff there and took over running the country was uh, to nationalize the oil company, uh, Venezuelan oil company. And what the heck happened there? I mean, didn't uh, didn't exactly work out the way they were hoping, did it? Oh, no. But I mean, that's one of the appeals for the socialists is that if you have a golden goose that looks like it's some source for free money, 
then you know, what could possibly go wrong? So they nationalize things thinking, oh, good. Well, it doesn't take any skill or any brains to do yeah, this. We'll just keep collecting the money and then we'll redistribute it. <laughs> but of course, that never works because of human nature and because of the need for competence and so forth. So when people are rewriting America's history to cancel out all of the good things that the founders did, that our constitution has done, that capitalism has brought us and so forth. They're just setting us up for their, you know, wonderful new idea where they're just going to take whatever is here and then loot it and call it socialism. Yeah. And we know, has there ever been an incidence in any type of somewhat complex society, even going back to the pilgrims where socialism has actually succeeded? Well, you know, the pilgrims are a very uh, apt example because when the uh, pilgrims came over, uh, they were on a contract where they had to collectively farm the land and then share the produce of it with the people who had paid for their voyage. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of years of this sort of primitive communism were a disaster for them. Uh, the reason why the pilgrims didn't have food, it wasn't because they didn't know how to grow food. It was because people didn't want to work. Uh, everybody had to share alike. And so there was no incentive for people to go above and beyond, you know, to make the food that was needed to keep this thing prosperous. So the revolutionary idea of the pilgrims was, hey, let's have private property. We're going to we're going to break our contract with these people. We're just going to farm the land uh, you know, as individuals. You keep what you grow and then you can sell what you grow. And it allowed for people who wanted to farm to do that. Other people specialized in uh, becoming artisans or craftsmen. And that's the real story of Thanksgiving. Now, you'll never find that in a revisionist history because that's mm -hmm. completely counter the narrative. But that's part of the American story, that the pilgrims experimented with this stuff. And then they found out, you know what, it's not working. But if we have private property, then we can prosper. And that's really what saved them. Hey, and uh, just a further note, to, it's a little early for celebrations of Thanksgiving, but it was effectively their creditors that forced them into the socialistic endeavor. And what happened then, it didn't work, it failed. So like you said, they split up the land, but effectively their creditors wound up being the direct beneficiaries of, of this whole uh, experiment, because if they had kept on going uh, through socialism, uh, they would have wound up like, uh, like Jamestown, would have been an abandoned uh, colony, and they would have been toast. So good things uh, do happen uh, once in a while, right? And uh, you never know how the experiment's going to work out. But we got hundreds of years of experience now is the point. We now know exactly how these things work out, right? Oh, of course. But again, this is why they want to erase our history. If any, any rational appreciation of what has gone on, I mean, look at the 20th century, for example, will show you that these schemes simply won't work uh, for a variety of reasons, mostly having to do with the incompetence of the people who run the show. Right. And there's no way to get rid of them because they control everything. And so things just get worse and worse. And if you can distract people from that, then maybe they'll be duped into uh, trying this experiment again. But throughout the book, I quote uh, Orwell's 1984, it, I mean, which is probably the best in terms of fiction, probably uh, the best um, exegesis on this phenomenon of, I mean, how a totalitarian state works. And erasing history was central to the plot of the book. Uh, Orwell meant this as a cautionary tale about how totalitarianism works. But unfortunately, many people on the left seem to have taken it as an instruction manual yeah. <laughs> of you know, so how true. to get things done. So true. A, and uh, yeah, it's become an interactive video for the left. And somehow leftism always equates with uh, socialism, fascism, deprivation of uh, basic fundamental human rights, at least what we consider to be fundamental human rights. So it's really important that, that you keep this in mind and you understand what's going on. Hey, so people want to get your book. Tell us the name of the, the <laughs> book again, James. 
Uh, it's called Erasing America, Losing Our Future by Destroying Our Past. It's uh, available on Amazon. It's at Barnes & Noble. And it's at um, any any bookstore that's uh, sensible. All right. Hey, and uh, we like that. Do you have a website people can check out? Uh, they could go to james-robbins.com. Uh, I'm also a columnist for USA Today, so you can read me there. Hey, imagine that. You're on a very uh, lefty uh, platform there. And uh, how's that working out for you? Uh, it works out well. I mean, I'm kind of one of the token guys, uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's OK, because there's always something to write about. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, always good for countless uh, entertainment value and everything else. Well, hey, got a question, comment on this interview? Any others? urge you to email us kl at kerrylutz.com. New studio is just about complete and the Twitter handle is at Kerry Lutz. The Facebook page Financial Survival Network for right now we got to use uh, social media till something else better comes along. Hopefully that'll come along soon. James, great having you on. Good luck with the book. Thanks, Kerry. My pleasure. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.